Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. This is our third video this morning regarding the new Chris Harrison podcast. He dropped late last night and he shares his tell-all first time in two years discussing his exit from Bachelor. And in doing so, he has a, about a four-minute clip where he discusses all of the Bachelor alumni that supported him and, of course, those that were gunning for him. Of course, maybe the actual audio isn't as clickable as this thumbnail, but he does say Nick saw the... Nick saw the blood in the water and saw the opportunity of a job and of course Chris Harrison discussing the fact that his job was up for grabs and a bunch of alumni were like ooh me pick me and of course Nick to his credit has a podcast that heavily discusses Bachelor it's a very well uh, known podcast he's got a big audience and um, uh, I'll play a few clips from what Nick said last year but first we're going to play what Chris Harrison had to say, follow me on Instagram at DNeals. Big show updates uh, happening, so definitely subscribe and follow me on Instagram for those updates. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And of course, every afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast, I'm going to discuss this further, wrap it all up, uh, and do a nice summary as I do every day in the afternoon. So for your rush hour home or driving or doing laundry or whatever you're doing, if you need someone to listen to, we usually have 30 minutes, although today might be longer as we share all the kind of he that has been spilled by Chris Harrison, his side, and what he's missed out on. I'll give you my full recap this uh, afternoon. And of course, um, the private bonus content, it's going to be available on my podcast, my Chris Harrison reaction. That's happening right now. So after you watch this video, you can go over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal, the private behind the scene bonus content, and hear some more of my thoughts on the matter. All right, let's have a listen. And uh, then we'll uh, share, uh, you know, some opinions uh, based on what Chris said thing that's thrown at you. And so I tried to help and counsel as, as best I could when they would reach out and needed it. And that those relationships grew and, and now these families have grown and we have children that have been born and there's a lot of pride in that. And early on, a lot of those people reached out. Some spoke out, um, you know, like a, a Catherine and Sean, who I love and adore very much. Um, you know, already and just about everyone who spoke out then became attached to this anti cancel culture uh, community, which I kind of push back on because I don't think that uh, wanting someone like Chris Harrison to be able to have the chance to speak further, uh, overcome, uh, you know, all of the things he said and did that were wrong. I think that's better for the general audience because I think that that lets us have the discourse, the conversation. Brian Lauren, Brad Womack. It's tough when you start naming names, it's like there's this. I could go for miles of Tristan Ryan and JP and Ashley and uh, Jaden Tanner and uh, Jojo and Jordan, who Lauren and I love so much, and Bob Guinea and Andrew Firestone, Ben and Ashley. I know they're not a couple, but you know they do the podcast together, and they actually spoke very highly and, and glowingly of of this announcement um, last month. And I appreciate Ben and Ashley very much, and Andy Dorfman. I'm so happy she's found love, and um, Sarah Heron, who's going to be a mom and Leslie Murphy, who is a mom and, and Tenley who is. And so, you know, and even a guy like Jake Pavelka, Jake Pavelka reached out. Wow. Um, Jake. the guy who helped me coin the phrase, everything is about to change. Um, <laughs> Raven and Adam up there, Chris souls, uh, the miracle man, Eric Beeger, got to mention him. One of my favorite human beings to come through the show, that spirit. Uh, he, he and I have had some great conversations, um, since all of this went down and I appreciate it. And even those that were critical, early on here it comes i'm glad i've gotten to run into a lot of them uh, mike johnson was was one who was very critical outspoken as soon as this happened and understandably so um and we ran into each other ironically in vegas at an iheart event and gave each other a big hug had nothing but love and and he i, I very much appreciate he reached out to me while we were sitting there and spending time together and just thanked me for being kind of that big brother and always being there for him. And um, it was good to not necessarily make amends because we never got sideways. This is what I like. Mike Johnson can criticize Chris Harrison. Then they can have a conversation. And it's like, you know, we can realize it's kind of like a big family. Like we've all got members of our family that say or do things that may be insensitive or downright problematic. And like, you can't, I mean, you could disown your family, but um, that that's not what leads to growth. Now, of course, set boundaries, take care of yourself first, things like that. Is But just to reconnect. And, you know, Nick Vial was another one who, Nick wasn't really uh, a, 
strongly against me or, or said anything, but you know, I think Nick was one of those among many who probably saw the the blood in the water and and saw the opportunity of a job that would be really phenomenal. And I no doubt he wanted that job. And but we saw each other at Wells and Sarah's wedding and and gave each other a big hug. Saw Chris Souls there too. It was good to see Chris. And speaking of uh Wells and Sarah's wedding, which was phenomenal. A few bachelor people, a lot of modern family people. Um Wells has always been a very he first of all, he's a good man. He's a very good man and a good friend of mine. Um He'll never beat me on the golf course, but that's beside the point. He, um, Wells was in a very difficult situation because obviously he was still kind of connected to the show and he was doing stuff on Paradise, but he he was one of the first to reach out to me and just say, hey, look, I'm, uh, I'm staying out of this. You know, I, I love you, respect you. And I appreciated that. I appreciated him because if anybody had sights on the job, it could it easily was Wells and deservedly so, by the way. I I I thought to be completely candid that Wells was going to get the job. Wow. All right. So there's Chris Harrison. He said, I thought Wells was going to get the job. But now I can understand Chris not wanting anyone to come to his defense. Of course, he said he didn't want his brother to after his brother penned an opinion on on his character. And uh, but it's one of those things I can only imagine. You don't want people to have to deal with the hate you're receiving, but I'm sure. Chris Harrison doesn't forget those that did come to his defense. Now, of course, Wells was war, like had a job at Bachelor in Paradise, and people with jobs aren't going to defend. That's that's what it comes down to. It's everyone's looking out for their own self interest. So when you do see people that do defend him, and again, not defending Chris Harrison's actions, but defending the fact that he's more than what he might have come off as in a bad moment, and I think that's what people um, that you know people will to this day, still agree or disagree with uh, the handling of it. But I think most people agree, including Chris Harrison, that it was a messy interview that led to his firing. All right, so very interesting. I wanted to share with you a few things that Nick said on his podcast about wanting the job. And I can understand that people think that what Chris Harrison did was an easy thing, but I, I that'd be an ignorant statement to say, we don't know. You know, as like someone who's been in the Screen Actors Guild for pushing on 15, about 15 years now, you when, when acting is done well, it looks natural. You only notice it when it's bad. Same thing with hosting. You only notice it when it's bad. We don't know what's below the surface with what Chris Harrison brought to that uh, hosting role. We know with Jesse Palmer, he's doing a damn well good job. Uh, um, but Nick's going to kind of criticize Chris Palmer. I'm sorry, Jesse Palmer <laughs> in a second. But here's what Nick's statement was initially. And again, it's a fair statement. Nick offers a fair statement when Chris was going through his, uh, uh, you know, his uh, sort of firing. After seeing Chris's very disappointing and harmful interview with Rachel, I've spent the past two days speaking with many people from Bachelor Nation, including those involved. This is a teachable moment for us all. It can be unforget uncomfortable to recognize our own ignorance, but without recognition, there can be no accountability and growth. And that's what we all want right that's what we want it to live in a society that's progressive in our ability to be accountable but also growth see nick didn't just say accountability accountability means fire never talk about it growth means overcoming that having discussions and um here's what nick had to say in uh oh this is actually a funny clip where chris harrison offered nick advice that unfortunately chris harrison could have used i feel like we have similar senses of humor it's a kind of dry sarcastic and chris just texts me and goes don't, don't, mess this this up. Up. <laughs> don't mess this up. Don't mess this up. That was your congratulations. Yeah. No, I, mean, I, I could. I, that was really. It was really a fantastic. Good luck. Don't up this up. I really. And then, of course, Chris for sure effed it up. Now, here are my two videos reporting on the matter here, with what Nick thought of Jesse Palmer as the host, and then what Nick thinks he could have done better or could have brought to the table as a host. About things like racism, diversity, emotional abuse. Gender Gas, dynamics, gender dynamics, queers, like you, you know, know, with Demi, like yeah, yeah, uh, bisexual relationships. Mm -hmm. And is Jesse Palmer the guy to have these conversations? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know Jesse Palmer. I know he's been calling X's and O's. Like, I don't. And know. And of course, I commented. I found that dismissive that he's been calling X's and O's because obviously Jesse Palmer has done more than just call uh, NFL football games. But you know, but understandably, he was also a lead on the show we had jesse on i mean and, clearly he's media trained, and we had so. he's media trained totally. yeah but that's what i'm saying like yeah, historically like, you, you got away with a host that was just more like hey man like i'm just here like just a suit it's just a super mm -hmm. like hey guess what most dramatic season ever 
And I think I think that Nick could admit, if pressed by a producer or somebody here, that Chris Harrison's job is more than that as host. I don't exactly know what it is, but it seems to be like it's more than just showing up on the dotted line and saying, well, this was a tough you know, week for you, you know? You know, but like the show has evolved. The audience has evolved. There's a greater expectation. The show, I don't know if the show wants to be, but the show has become like ingrained in pop culture and and the and, and society and, and social media are wanting to have these conversations. Mm-hmm. The show is about dating and relationships. Okay, so and that's and that's of course where we are still to this day is kind of reckoning with what is the show about. Here's what Caitlin said after she found out she was no longer gonna be host of the show. I felt like I deserved to like go on, especially if there's two bachelorettes and I just felt like I was in a good position. I'd proved myself and I thought in my head, like when they gave me the call and said, and people were like, oh, Caitlin said she got blindsided. I, maybe I did, but I did get a phone call. And they said, I'm sure you saw this coming. And I was like, no. I- so of course, everyone is the lead in their own story. Caitlin thought she would have been great at it. Heck, I think I'd be pretty good at it. <laughs> Who doesn't, right? We don't, we, but, but of course, I'm more complicated than that. Here's what Nick all, had to say, a final clip. Bummer. I, I want to ask you, Lisa uh, uh, and Amanda, what do we what do we think of Jesse Palmer? It's it's. I was asking Natalie as well when I was watching it. By the way, he does the Becca Kufrin style of question where he begins the question, then inserts his answer. <laughs> Hard for me not to be biased. I feel like when people like Fair. myself or Wells or Ben or Caitlin why, and Tasha, why not you guys? Who all think I could have done this? Yeah, you know, Fair. And, and maybe Fair. you know. Um, and what he means is like obviously Jesse Palmer was a bachelor as well as Nick was. So yeah, of course. Like yeah, they could have done it. Tasha could have done it. Uh, ben, ben Higgins could have done it. Yeah, they all they all are good looking and and sort of have media training by being the lead. Uh, but so did Jesse Palmer, and Jesse Palmer was also on a bake show, so he wasn't just calling X's and O's. He's got a lot going on there, and maybe Jesse Palmer just has better agents. But also maybe Jesse Palmer's farther removed, a little bit older. Like Nick and Tasha and Ben Higgins and all of them, they're all at on at the right age that they could be intermingling with these contestants right i mean a lot of the contestants that are on the show now are the same age as 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 you know as nick and ben and all these people like who they're dating so you know uh, of course in hindsight yeah a lot of people could have done the show a cat probably could have hosted the show but in the end chris says nick wanted my job and i think that's fair i think everyone wanted that job it was a melee a free-for-all let me know what you guys think that's probably going to be it for us today we're going to have so much more content for you though on bachelor rush hour i'm going to play some of your voicemails so last chance if you want to leave a voicemail i won't be able to get to all of them but if you leave a good voicemail we'll get to it 401-213-9828 i'll play those on the podcast bachelor rush hour uh wherever you listen to podcasts I think 75% of our audience is listening on an iPhone. So I'll post a link in the description, click on it, and it'll take you right to today's podcast, Bachelor Rush Hour. We'll talk to you later. Bye, everybody.